Hello everyone. And so the, today we will learn that how we can collect the census data um, by using census APIs. So we will start from the very beginning. So we will create a database. Uh, we will also uh, set up a Python editor, and then we will apply the API case uh, from census, and then we will use a Python code that to collect the census data and insert data into our created uh, database. So uh, I'm using the AWS Academy Learner Lab. So let's start lab. Uh, and then uh, we're going to create databases and also a path editor uh, by using the AWS uh, service. So AWS Academy provides um, about 50 credits uh, for each single student each semester. All right, uh, so now we can see the AWS uh, is available. So if we click this URL, and we will be able to access the AWS console. Um, because we're using the Academy uh, Lab, so we don't have all the services available. And uh, you can always check the, the readme file on the right and to see what are the available services. So AWS uh, constantly change those available services. OK, uh, so I'm going to start click this uh, URL. So now we're uh, at the AWS console. Uh, so first, we're going to start a database. So let's search RDS, which stands for the Managed Relational Database Service. Uh, so we are st set up a database first. Uh, we go to the DB instance. And we say we create a new database. Uh, we are going to choose a standard create. Uh, the RDS support different uh, database engines. Uh, we are going to use PostgreSQL. Uh, uh, and we are going to choose the free tier. Uh, however, even we are choosing the free tier uh, because we are using the Academy uh, license or the Academy account, so it will still cost our credits. Uh, we can give it a database name. Uh, let's call it demo database. Uh, and now we're going to define the credentials. So uh, the best practice is that we let the AWS uh, SQL Manager uh, to manage our credentials. Uh, however, since we are going to connect the database with our uh, uh, GUI, so like page admin, so let's tap our password manually. OK, and we also want to uh, public access. Uh, again, this is not recommended in production. So you want to keep your database uh, private. However, because we want to uh, use page admin, to access our database, so we need to give it a public access. OK, and we also turn off the performance monitoring. And in the additional configurations, uh, I'm also disabled the automate uh, backup. So the reason that I turn off the performance insight and also disable automatic backups is that we only have uh, $50 credits. So I want to save the credits. So I just turn those both options off. Uh, in the production, it is recommended that you always enable the automatic backup. And if you need the performance insights, you also should to turn on the performance insights. All right, so let's so create our database. Um, this may take a few minutes uh, to have the database uh, become available. And I'm going to close this one. And if I open the database URL, so this is a summary page where you will be able to see the endpoint when the database is available. And we should keep the endpoint private um, because otherwise other people may be accessed uh, our database. Um, in the meantime, we're going to also change the security settings, so security groups. So that's uh, beneath the security section. 
So this means that uh, we're going to change the firewall uh, to allow um, uh, other computers like our uh, personal computers to access our database. Again, this is also not recommended in production. So we want to open this one by adding an inbound rule and say we will, because we're using a post call, so let's find our post call. And we want to allow any IP address uh, because we want to use our uh, computer to access a database so that we can make queries. Again, this is not recommended uh, for production. So let's add these rules. Uh, and then we're going to set up a path editor. So uh, AWS has Cloud9 uh, as a path editor. It also has a SageMaker, which can set up the notebook instance. So let's use SageMaker. So, so SageMaker is a AWS service uh, to train machine learning models. Uh, However, it also provides notebook instances. So let's go ahead and go to notebook instance. Uh, if you like, you can also link the instance to your GitHub repository so that you can synchronize your notebook with your GitHub account. Uh, we are not going to do that. So instead, let's just go ahead and create a notebook instance. Uh, we just give demo notebook instance. Uh, you can choose a type. Uh, uh, the larger, the more, more powerful instance will cost more credits. And because we are doing very simple uh, works, I'm going to choose the T2 medium to save the uh, credits. And also the IM rules. So we are using Academy account. So we can only use the uh, lab rule, which uh, has a uh, uh, the, the appropriate, the, the sufficient permissions for us to like access our database and also our uh, S3 bucket. Uh, if you choose to add your GitHub, and this is where you should, you can select your GitHub repository. All right, uh, so I'm going to uh, create a notebook instance. Okay, so now that notebook instance is being created, uh, Let's also go back to RDS, see the status of our database. So our database is also being created. Uh, we also choose to deploy the database in a single AZ. So that means that we don't have any backups. Um, that is also because we want to save our uh, credits. All right, so now we are waiting for the database to be ready. We are also waiting for the uh, notebook instance to be ready. So, uh, uh, where we are waiting, we can go to a sensors website and then we can request a sensors data API key. So, or you can type the organization. So, and then you can type your email address. Uh, so, I'm going to use my Gmail. And of course, I have to agree with the terms of the service and I request a key. Uh, so we should be able to receive the key in a, a few seconds. Um, also, uh, uh, we if you don't have the page admin, uh, you may also want to download the page admin um, or from this website. So page admin is a GUI graphic user interface that allow us to uh, access our database and also query the data. So you can download the page admin uh, based on the OS that you are using. All right, uh, so now uh, my database is available. So I can go ahead and access, uh, check my endpoint, which is a URL or G, uh, author's uh, host address of my database. And I can copy uh, this uh, endpoint. And then I'm going to start the pitch admin. So this is how the pitch admin uh, look like. Uh, we can right click the servers and also register a new server. Uh, we can give it a name, uh, demo DB. Uh, for the connections, we need to provide the endpoint or the host name um, because we didn't change the username. So the username is QSTGRES. 
and then we type our uh, password. Uh, now we are able to access our uh, database. So right now we can see the status of our database. Uh, on the database, we can, on the server, we have two databases. One is PostGIS, another one is RDS admin. So we should not access RDS admin. Uh, in our PSTGIS database, uh, we have one schema that is called public. So public, uh, the schema is like a folder or container that can uh, organize different tables. And within that schema, we have our tables. Right now, uh, they are empty. Uh, we can also have views, uh, functions, and also indexes, etc. Uh, so we're going to create tables later. So, so. Uh, next, uh, I also received the uh, sensors API key. So that's how the key looks like. Uh, it is a very long string. Uh, so our next step is that we're going to store those credentials on AWS. So we go back to AWS console, and this time we're going to uh, open the third service called Secret Manager. So Secret Manager. Uh, this service is used to store our uh, credentials. So let's store our secret. And if you see this error, that is because we are using the Academy account. So if we can ignore this error. So first, we're going to store our uh, sensors API key. So let's choose other type of the secret. And for the key, we call it API and score key. And for the value, we just paste our uh, uh, Key that we received in the email. So make sure you, you paste that one correctly and we don't have additional uh, spaces. Okay. And then we go to next. Oh, we need to give it a name for the secret. Uh, so let's call it sensors. And then we go to next. And do you want automatic rotation? And uh, let's just uh, disable that. Okay, and at the bottom, you can see they provided a sample code. So uh, for example, here, those are the pencil code. So those are how you call those uh, credentials. So how you retrieve your credentials. So for example, if I'm using Python, I can just simply copy this uh, function in your Python code. Uh, to retrieve your credentials. So other people, when they look at your Python code, they will not be able to view or access your credentials. They can just read those functions. Okay, so let's start our first secret and let's refresh. And we can see our sensors uh, API key is not stored. So let's also start our second credential, which is our uh, RDS uh, instance. Remember that we used the uh, PSTGIS, the default username. We also gave it a password. And here we can see we have one database that is available. So that is exact the database that we want to store the credential. Um, let's go to next. Again, we need to give it a, a secret name. Uh, so we gave it a secret name, uh, PSTGRE SQL. Uh, let's go to next. Again, uh, we all have the, the same uh, Python code. Um, so let's start the secret. Okay, so if we uh, refresh, we can see now we have two uh, credentials that are stored. So one is the census API key, another one is our uh, database uh, credential. All right, uh, so now our demo notebook is available. So let's open the JupyterLab. So this is a, a cloud-based uh, Python editor. Uh, it's often used for the uh, machine learning 
uh, build machine learning models. So uh, you can see that AWS provides some sample uh, notebooks. Um, so if you are interested, you can check those notebooks. And if you um, connect with a Git repository and you will are, you are see a different interface here where it shows a comment that how you can uh, uh, communicate with a GitHub repository. So now let's go back to the files. Uh, so uh, we're going to use the provided Python code. So uh, if you go to my um, GitHub, um, this is a, a notebook that collects sensors data. So you can download this uh, notebook. Or you can just go to the repository and say I want to copy the entire repository. So copy this entire repository. And then we go back to the SageMaker. And I say I want to uh, call it a repository. So I paste my repository. And I see colon. All right, so now this repository is now being downloaded. Uh, if you open it, and we're going to looking at the collect census data. So let's open this uh, notebook. Uh, so notebook organize the Python code into different cells. And uh, so first we need to install those Python package, the census Python package to call the census APIs. Uh, we also need to install the US uh, Python package so that can retrieve the the state names and also their FIPS code. And the last uh, Python code is going to um, install the, uh, to connect uh, our database. So connect our PostgreSQL database. Okay, so let's execute all the Python code. And this part of the section is going to uh, retrieve our uh, credentials. So remember that we use the secret manager to store our census API and also our database credentials. So now we are calling that function. So that piece of code that we saw at the bottom when we start our when we start the credentials. So now we are using that piece of function. I changed the function a little bit so that this function is able to retrieve both the API keys and also the database credential. So let's also run this code. Okay, and when you see a number, that means this code has been, and this cell or this piece of code has been executed. All right, so now we are going to connect to our uh, database. So you can see here, we're using the, the get secret function from this uh, part. We are, we are going to pass the host or uh, the URL, username, password to this uh, Python library and create a connection. And you can see I didn't review any credentials in the Python code. So let's run this one. And the next, we're going to create three tables. So uh, here are the SQL codes that to define uh, the three tables. Uh, so we're going to create a name table to store the uh, state names and also their FIPS code. And also the FIPS is a primary key. We're going to create a population table to store the population for each single state uh, and also in different years. Where the FIPS of the state and also year, those two columns are the primary, uh, primary key. We're also going to collect the house median median household income of each single state in different years. So the FIPS and the year are the, together are the primary key. Uh, and also we are going to create two uh, foreign keys. So we are link the income table to the name table and also a population table to the name table. So that is this uh, piece of uh, SQL code. Uh, there are a lot of EI diagram editors that can help you to generate those code. Uh, so if you can check my other uh, uh, tutorials on how to create the SQL code by using ER diagrams. So let's run this code. And now we're going to create those tables. So we are going to execute this SQL, SQL code and also commit that change. 
Uh, so now if I go back to my pitch admin and if I refresh my tables, now you can see those three tables are being uh, created. And also right now they should have no record. So if I check the rows, uh, you can see those are empty. All right. Uh, so now let's insert census data into tables. So first we need to authorize our census API. Uh, so, so again, we're using the secret function to pass API keys to the census uh, Python package. And then we can insert the state names into the name table. So we are using a for loop uh, to retrieve all the state names and also their FIPS and then we insert those into our name table. Uh, because DC is a separate, uh, is a special state, so we also need to insert DC name and also uh, DC FIPS separately. Uh, we execute those SQL code and also we make a commit. So let's run those uh, Python code. And now if we go back to our like, say, name table, we view those rows, and here we can see now we have just inserted uh, all the state names and also the FIPS. And next, we are going to connect the population table. So uh, we are also still using a for loop. Um, so we are getting the table name, that is a, the census table that uh, contains the population. And for all the state, and also we're going to collect for each year. So we'll start from 2005 until 2019. So this is the range function. So we, until 2019. And then we are insert the FIPS publish and also year into our um, population table. So now you can see we are collecting the, the population table in different years. Okay, uh, we're going to do the same thing for the income. So this is the income table name uh, for all the states, and uh, between in the between uh, in the between the year of two thousand five until two thousand nineteen. Okay. And let's check our uh, table. Let's first check the income. OK, so the income table, uh, we have the data. And let's also check the population. OK, nice. We have the population data in different years for different states. All right, uh, so let's close our database connection. And uh, that's. Uh, that's it for the Python part. So we can now uh, close our uh, uh, Jupyter Lab. And don't forget to stop the SageMink instance. So because every time it is running, we are they are using our uh, credits. So let's stop the notebook instance. Uh, let's also stop the database. So. Again, when the database is running, it's also using our um, credits. So let's go to Actions, and let's stop the database. Uh, for the database, remember that it will uh, uh, stop for seven days, and it will automatically restart after seven days. So keep that in mind. So let's stop this database. And while they are being stopped, so when we see that it is stopping, uh, we can go to our Learner Lab, and we can end this lab.